Okay, welcome everyone. We're so glad you're joining us here today. I'm going to share my screen. We have a short video for you to watch, um, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Hi, welcome to the Myers Lawson School of Construction. My name is Brian Kleiner, and I'm the director of this fabulous, fabulous school. We are unique in the country. We are a top three school of construction and our programs are top three as well. We're quite unique in that we have under one roof, both construction engineering and management and building construction. Building construction is our term for a construction management program. So uniquely in the country, we're affiliated with both the College of Engineering and the College of Architecture and Urban Studies. How did we get here? Well, we were created by the industry for the industry. Two gentlemen by the names of Russ Myers and John Lawson, fraternity brothers from years ago, got together and said, we envision a future professional in the construction industry that merges leadership, technical skills, design skills, and they essentially founded the school with a generous donation. Now, I have to tell you, our donors go beyond Ross Myers and John Lawson. We have a fabulous array of supporters who are engaged with us. Our current location, Bishop Fabro Hall, you see behind me, is about to be doubled in size through the generous donations of our donors. We are building a new building that will double the physical size of the school, and we hope to fill this new building with all of you as well. So we are increasing our enrollments because the industry, frankly, needs you as soon as possible. They need professionals to join the workforce as construction managers and construction engineers. It's really that simple. So in that regard, why join the construction industry and why join the School of Construction? Well, our students will be placed. You join us 100% guaranteed that you will have a job upon graduation. More than that, our students experience multiple offers, which is amazing. They uh, have multiple internships as well. So where do students get these internships? Where do they get these jobs? Well, we hold career fairs twice per year. And this is where our students engage with companies, start e starting out even as freshmen with internships. So you will have multiple internships and multiple job offers if you join us. It, it's almost guaranteed. Now, the only time you see our industry folks is not at career fairs. You will engage with them. Perhaps you'll meet them as scholarship donors. You will meet them in other events. They're quite involved, for example, in evaluating our, our student projects. So it's a networking opportunity. And frankly, it's a family. Our culture is a family. And that includes our faculty, our staff, our students, I mean, our alumni and our friends from the industry. We really strive for this family culture. And that begins with world-class faculty, frankly. And you will have an opportunity to get to know faculty at a personal level. And you won't be limited to just the classroom setting. We would encourage you to join us for undergraduate research, independent studies, whether it be smart design and construction, which we have a lot of activity around today, or energy, or sustainability, or safety, whatever your passion is, there is a faculty member here to uh, work with you and help you grow in an experiential one-on-one -on -one fashion. Beyond the academic involvement, we have a number of student activities. Our student groups are very, very strong. For example, building women in construction, the industry is crying out for more women professionals. So again, if you're a female, join us. We will guarantee a successful career. It, it is that exciting an industry right now. So beyond 
uh, building women in construction. There are other things you could do. You could get involved in competition teams, for example. And our students will travel around the country. We hope that travel will be uh, something we start doing again very, very soon. Uh, our students and our faculty are doing great virtually in the meantime. So all of these activities are still ongoing in a virtual fashion for the for a temporary uh, basis. And beyond just competing to compete sake, frankly, our students do exceptionally well and receive awards. And, and some of these are monetary, some of these are trophies and plaques and all the rest. But You'll fill up your, your desk space with a number of awards if, if you join us here at the School of Construction. Beyond that, we have a very strong, the university has a very strong, what we call UPROSM value, which is, is serving others. And so you can get involved domestically in Habitat for Humanity. But as well, once it's safe to travel again, we invite you to join us overseas where we have been involved in building schoolhouses, infrastructure, uh, various things in, in countries where there are less fortunate folks. And a lot of these projects are teaching people how to fish, right? Having the locals work with us, with our students and our faculty in learning how to construct, for example, a sanitary uh, plumbing system or a schoolhouse in an area that's ravaged by tropical storms. So there's plenty of opportunities. These activities I'm sure will pick up in the very near future. So join us, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. We invite you and your family to join our extended family at the Myers Lawson School of Construction for the best experience, the best education, and an investment in really the most profitable and successful career you can imagine. So please, please join us. We look forward to seeing you very soon. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ann Lee. I'm the Academic Advisor for Construction, Engineering, and Management. And we have two of our current students here today as well. Um, so I will let them introduce themselves. Emmy, how about we start with you? Hey everyone, my name is Emmy Melkert. Um, I'm from Powhatan, Virginia, which is kind of outside of Richmond. Um, and I'm a junior in construction engineering and management. Um, hi, I'm Taylor Kulik. I'm a senior in construction engineering and management and I'm from Glen Ridge, New Jersey. So right outside New York City. And maybe as we're getting started, um, Emmy and Taylor, do you want to kind of share a little bit more about how you came to choose CEM as your major and kind of what your experience has been so far? Yeah, I can start. Um, so I came out of high school knowing I wanted to do engineering at Tech and uh, wasn't really sure what kind yet, but I was invited to go to the um, spring preview day for this uh, major. And um, there I just met all the staff and some students who are actually ambassadors then, I'm an ambassador now. Um, but they were just talking about how much they loved the major and how exciting the industry was. Um, and I got connected with an internship before coming to college. Um, and I've ended up working with that same company for the past three summers and I still work with them um, and likely will have a job with them outside of college. So um, a lot of internship on the job learning just kind of threw myself into it. I never thought I'd be in construction, but it kind of found me. So um, and since being in classes, I've gotten to meet a lot of um, really cool professors who uh, yeah, are doing interesting research and have gotten me excited about um yeah, mechanical systems and um, new technologies and things like that. So I just kind of see a lot of opportunities in the industry right now. Um, and it's a really exciting time to be coming in with all of those new things growing. So um, I stuck with it and have liked it the whole time. So yeah. Um, and then I kind of have a different aspect, I think of it. So I came into tech, I had absolutely no idea what engineering major I wanted to do. Um, but I went through all the info sessions that we had and coming to the CEM one, they were talking about how like you've always been fascinated with buildings and Legos. And on my side, I'm like the office side of management. So I want to be a project manager is like my final job I want to have. And they were talking about if you're organized and you like to lead and everything like that and just kind of spoke to me. And that's what made me end up choosing this major just because I've always loved buildings. I've always loved houses and I've always loved construction. I just 
didn't actually really know it was a thing. So what are the major differences between the building construction and construction engineering programs? Um, So that's a great question. So as Dr. Kleiner mentioned, we're all under the same school, the School of Construction, Um, but those two majors actually come from two different colleges. So construction engineering and management comes from the College of Engineering. Building construction comes from the College of Architecture and Urban Studies. So it's interesting because a lot of times you can end up in similar careers after graduation, but I would say the biggest difference is if you have a desire to get your professional engineering license, then going construction engineering and management is the route um, because that allows you to be eligible to take what's called the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. That's the first step in becoming a licensed professional engineer. Um, Once you pass that exam, which usually happens during your senior year, you then work with a professional engineer for three to five years. Then you take another exam. And then if you pass that, you become a professional engineer. That allows you to do the structural design of buildings, as well as to review those structural designs and be able to put your stamp on it. So if you have a desire to do some designing, um, if you are interested in the structural side, Um, then I think CEM is the better direction. The other difference is the coursework. So because construction engineering and management is an engineering degree, there's a heavy focus on math and science. Um, So that first year, you're going to do two semesters of calculus. You have chemistry with a lab. You'll have two semesters of physics. um, And then you'll also have multivariable calculus linear algebra and differential equations. Um, The other difference is you take courses from different areas. So you have a heavy emphasis in civil engineering courses, where again, you're learning about the structural side of buildings, you're learning about the materials involved. On the building construction side, you actually choose one track that interests you. And the options there are residential development, Um, There's also an option to double major with real estate. There's a sustainability option and a virtual design option. So if you're more interested in using um, BIM modeling, the 3D modeling software system, um, then that could be a track. So I I would really say kind of think about the types of courses you're going to enjoy. If you like math and science and the structural side, construction engineering and management is the way to go. If you feel like maybe you'd like to avoid as much math and science as possible um, and you're interested in any of those specific tracks that I mentioned, um, then I think building construction can be the better route. Um, Emmy, Taylor, do you have anything you want to add about the differences between the two? I think just one thing I want to emphasize is we can get the exact same jobs, which you said. Like I know a bunch of people in BC who are going to have the same exact job as me in CEM. So it is really about what courses you want to take. Like I very much enjoy math and science and I've always loved that like from high school on to college. Um, And I think I excel in like a hard work environment and stuff like that. So definitely for me lean towards the engineering side aspect of it. Yeah, I think kind of along those lines too, like having the harder classes freshman year kind of set me up or not fresh, like freshman and sophomore year have set me up well for um, like my construction classes that I have with some BC students. Um, I know that they have challenging workloads as well, but I feel like I ha- kind of have built up my work ethic and my test de- ethic, I guess. Um, and yeah, have really become like a stronger student and also maybe like a stronger professional um, yeah, after having taken those hard classes and feel like more well-rounded about like my understanding of why we do things a certain way, like how things work kind of thing. So I really appreciated that aspect. And maybe Emmy and Taylor, if you want to talk about some of your internship experiences um, and what you've gotten to do through that. Yeah, I can share first again. Um, Yeah, so I've worked with um, WM Jordan, uh, which is a mid to large size contractor um, based in Newport News, but I worked in the Richmond office. Um, So kind of like Taylor said, I also enjoyed the office side of things um, and yeah, work as sort of a project engineer intern. Mm -hmm. So I got to be doing a lot of RFIs, submittals, um, communication with the team um, as a whole, but also with the architect. Um, And so they also showed me like a really broad view into kind of the construction process as a whole. So I got to work with some estimating, um, work with some marketing, um, 
even some supplier diversity aspects. So like, I really got a really wholesome view of like what the, what construction industries work, how the job is procured, how it's um, handled in operations, um, even some estimating aspects. So yeah, really like kind of threw myself in and like, I feel like I understand a lot more like seeing it in the field or like in the office. Um, and now I've also gotten a lot of really great contacts um, through that, like people that are on my, in my corner um, helping me. I can call them up anytime if I have a question about an assignment or something, um, or even just like we need some life advice with construction. I've, I've definitely taken advantage of those contacts. So um, I've been really thankful to have had that experience because I think it's like helped me a lot, um, even just like being more familiar with how to read drawings and um, again, like how the construction process works. That's helped me a lot in my classes. Um, and then like kind of going back and forth from like the school year to the summer, like it really meshes well, like the coursework in CEM is very focused on like getting you ready for the job. So I felt like a lot of it kind of connected. Just because I don't want to repeat exactly what Emmy said, because I think we had very similar internships. I'll just talk about some of my friends that have had other types of internships in the construction industry. So I had office internships. Um, I had one with Davis Construction, and then I was supposed to have one last summer with Shama Construction in New York City, but it got canceled because of COVID. So when I was at David, there was actually two, Davis, there was two sides of um, two areas that you could be in. So I was on the project management side and I did the exact same things that we did, which was like RFIs, submittals, communications with teams and stuff like that. But a lot of my friends were on the superintendent side. And that's when you are usually like five days, your entire five days, of your workday would be on site and you're working with all the subcontractors, you have communication with them. And you would act as like an assistant superintendent and you would follow the head superintendent. So you'd walk the site with him. You would walk the owners. You would just do all these different things, but you're mostly on site. And I would say it's definitely a more hands-on experience when you're a superintendent superintendent versus a project manager. Um, I often as project manager would go and work with the assistant superintendent. We'd sometimes do things together, but they were definitely the more hands-on experience versus I was more in the office at a desk, which I enjoy more. <laughs> Emmy and Taylor, do you want to talk maybe about some of the student um, organizations you've been involved with um, and any, any extracurriculars that have been maybe related to the major? Yeah, I can talk about one of the ones that I did. This was, I think, sophomore year. So I was part of like the mentorship program where we had a not a company, I don't know what the word is. So it was a person in the industry was my mentor. So he worked for a company in Atlanta. He worked for Jay Dunn. And we would have calls about once a month and we would just talk through things. And I would ask him things about the industry. And this was all before I had my first internship. So for me, it was really a great experience because I got to call him whenever. And I would just straight up ask him what a submittal was, what an RFI was, which I'm sure you guys have no idea what that means in the slightest because I have no idea. Um, so it was really great just to have a contact in the school set that up. And he was great. He helped me land my first internship. He gave me interview tips and I still have con his contact now. And we have really a relationship that he has said to me, just call me whenever and like, I'll give you a job because we just got that close. So I know I always have him and I go to him at every single career fair and talk to him all the time and just ask him advice and email him. So it was definitely a great setup that the school was able to give me just a person in industry that obviously I could have as much contact with as I wanted and was just there as a mentor for me throughout my whole sophomore year. And that was, I guess, kind of like a club that the school set up, but not necessarily a club. <laughs> yeah, I um, participated with Building Women in Construction um, a little bit last year. I wasn't able to go as much as I wanted to. Um, but that was really cool because they had um, meetings where they talked about, you know, professional tips. Um, they also had a uh, industry um, panel come in where people, women in the industry um, would come and they'd give advice. They could answer questions that the students had. Um, and that was really helpful and encouraging to, yeah, just talk to people um, who are also women in the industry. Um, and I've also done some Habitat for Humanity work, but that was back home. But uh, wanting, wanting to get more involved with Habitat at Tech. So. If you want to maybe both talk about where you're hoping to go after graduation, Taylor, I know you mentioned project management. If you maybe want to kind of talk a little bit more about that and, and kind of hopefully what's next for both of you. Yeah, so I actually have or accepted a job. So I'm going to be working in New York City with the company I was supposed to intern with last summer, Shama Construction. So I'm going into a 
rotational, it's called like construction management rotational program. So I'll be going through basically a three year intro program where I do one year as an estimator, one year as a superintendent and one year as a project manager um, to get kind of just an overall background of everything. So I don't necessarily know which one I want to do totally. I'm definitely leaning more towards estimator and project management. So the estimator is a person who takes a set of drawings. So it'd be like 300 page set of drawings and has to guess how much the project will cost to build. And that includes materials, workers, hours of workers, and anything extra like paying people and all their salaries and stuff like that. Um, The project manager is the person who's the liaison between the people who are actually building it Um, So subcontractor, superintendent, and then the people who are paying for the project. So you're the liaison between the owner and the workers. And you have to have a lot of organization. You're in the office and you're on a lot of calls, emailing, and you just deal with like money and stuff like that. And then superintendent is the person who's in charge of all the subcontractors working on the project. So I'll just go as a little assistant role in each of those and try to go through a little rotational program and then Hopefully at the end of the three years, I get to pick which one I want to do. And so that's kind of my setup right now. That sounds so cool. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I'm still a junior and kind of still figuring out what I want to do. So I had the office um, experience over the summer, all of the summers I've worked there. Um, I'm the company I'm working with, WM Jordan. They have a lot of work going on on Virginia Tech's campus right now. So I'm actually interning as kind of a superintendent intern right now. Um, so I'll do inspection, walk inspections, um, try, do more like kind of day-to-day material tracking, um, help with anything they need on site, um, things like that. And I've enjoyed that as well. So um, kind of figuring out, yeah, like Taylor's program where you could try everything out sounds awesome. But I guess that's why internships are so fun because you get to see different things. Um, but I also have kind of struck an interest in the mechanical system. So um I could see myself working in uh, a mechanic building systems group. A lot of companies have that where um, you'll be working with the HVAC or the heating, ventilation and air conditioning, um, the plumbing and electrical. So um, that side of things is definitely an option if that's something that interests you. Um, And also I've enjoyed um, kind of the more uh, like, I guess I said earlier, like technology aspects, things. So like BIM, um, building information modeling, it's a way to use online platforms or yeah, technology to coordinate the building kind of before it's actually built to find problems and um, yeah, really just get a good idea of what the building is going to look like before it's actually built. So that is something I'm also interested in. Um, Also kind of thinking about maybe working for Habitat for Your Humanity in some aspect. So lots of, that's just, my different ideas gives you an idea of how many different things you can do with the major. So one, yeah, I was just thinking about that when you said all those things, I originally wanted to work for a Habitat Humanity company too, way back when I was like a freshman, that was my dream. And now it has shifted to many different things, but in the construction industry, also when you go on to jobs and stuff like that, you can pick what type of construction you want to do. So you could be like interiors, residential, commercial buildings, educational buildings, you could build skyscrapers. And so the company that I'm working for, the section I like dream want to go in is luxury construction, um, where they build just like the, somebody else build a skyscraper and they're just in charge of like the penthouse part of it or something like that. So I'm really into interior connection. So it's more like renovations. The building's already built and they're just redoing the inside. And that's kind of where my main focus is right now. But everyone's always all over the map. You could just be the person doing just the excavation and groundwork or you just like working with steel and that's all you want to do it's kind of really whatever your interests are hey thank you both so much what advice would you have for prospective students emmy and taylor i would just say i guess like don't be afraid to go where you want to go and if that changes change doesn't matter at all like you can come into college i know plenty of people that have switched their majors because they started working in one thing and they realized they didn't like it all. Like I know a bunch of people that started in CEM and then switched to BC. So just like, don't be afraid to, I guess, go with your heart. And like, if you think one thing and then change your mind, like nobody's going to care, you can still finish on time. It's really not that big of a deal. And I think there's a lot of, there's a big like idea around it that people think it's bad to like switch and stuff like that. And it's definitely not. So that would just be my only advice. Just like follow what you want to do. 
Yeah, I think kind of also along those lines, like have grace for yourself when like you're you're learning. It's very early, like with construction, people spend like a lifetime in it and don't know everything. And I feel like I've often like compared myself to other like students or people that I'm working with that have been there for 20 years or something. And I'm just thinking, oh, I'm so behind. I don't know as much as they do or kind of thing. But a lot of you find that a lot of people like if you just ask a question, they won't think you're dumb. They just want to help you learn, grow, especially like uh, professors or people that you're working closely with at your internship. They love seeing um, like people growing in the industry. And um, yeah, just, it also just really cool because you get to meet a ton of different kinds of people in this like industry, like um, so many skilled uh, workers and um, different owners. And yeah, you really just get to see all kinds of people. And um, I've learned a lot from them and um, yeah, having humility to know that, yeah, I don't know everything, but also be okay with the fact that uh, it's a process and not anyone knows everything. And you really have to rely on like your team and your network to help you grow and um, just be patient with yourself because that knowledge will come eventually. Great. Thank you both so much. We have two of our students here today to talk with you as well, and I'll let them introduce themselves. So um, we'll go ahead and start with Morgan. Hi, my name is Morgan. I'm a junior in CEM this year. I'm also in Building Women in Construction, uh, which is one of the clubs associated with our school. My name is Bo. I'm a junior in Construction Engineering and Management, and I'm from Stanton, Virginia. All right. Thank you both for joining us today. What is construction and management? So our major is very unique, and that is it is called Construction Engineering and Management, and it was really created by the industry um, in 2007. They were giving us the feedback that they liked our graduates, but what they were really looking for were students who had expertise in the structural aspect of construction, as well as those people skills and management skills, um, and really to be able to combine those. And so that really helped inform us to create construction engineering and management. So the focus is really designed to help give you the structural understanding of buildings, as well as the material side, but then also combining that with the business side and the management side, learning how to work well in teams, um, learning people skills, um, and so really combining that to go out into the industry. And really typical jobs for our students are to become project managers or project engineers, where they're overseeing the entire construction process from the design to the completed project and every step in between. And so some days you may be on the job site, some days you may be in the office. Um, so there's a lot of variety involved there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this next question to you, Morgan and Bo. The question is describe the classroom and field training and if there's any emphasis. So it really kind of depends on the classes that you're in because a bunch of the classes um, they have field trips to local sites where you can see what you've learned through the class and you can see the physical application of it. And then there are also some classes like the learning abroad classes that they mentioned where it's not just the in-classroom experience, but you actually go and do the physical hands-on experience, which is different than just going to a field trip because you can see what it does, but you don't actually do it. But the field trip, you can actually do it. And there are a couple different clubs where you can actually go and physically do what you've learned throughout the classes you've done. And there's a lot of labs as well that uh, show the physical application of what we're learning and different various things where you have to do like same soil testing and same testing and looking at things that you have to do in the field. So it mostly in classroom setting because there's more emphasis on that because that's what we have the easiest access to but there's definitely field stuff that we do as well. The class field trips are definitely fun, but you definitely want to try to get an internship to really get more field training for a future job. That's the number one thing I would say. Yeah, that's a good segue. Do either of you want to talk about internship experiences that you ha have had or ones that you're going to be having this coming summer? I can talk about um, my previous experience in construction and my upcoming internship. I worked for a local general contractor um, in the past, and uh, I did a lot of labor stuff, and it was fun for a summer. Uh, I can see why people can only do that for a little amount of time because it's hard labor, and it's but it was very interesting, and it helped me 
learn the importance of this is going to sound weird how to schedule your day how to um economically make sure you don't use too much material and um stuff like that it was very learning experience that way and then this summer i'm planning on doing an internship with ryan holmes i will be interning as a project manager there and i have the general idea of what i'm supposed what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be working at a community where they're building houses out in fredericksburg and i will just follow around learn about how they do project management stuff and learn about their how they run their company morgan and bo do you want to talk about how you ended up choosing cem and kind of what your experience has been so far so i kind of chose cem after i went to the uh info session freshman year as a general engineer because i wasn't really sure what major i wanted to do but as soon as i went to the info session I kind of knew that that was what I wanted to do. It sounded really interesting, sounded like something I'd really like. And just hearing everyone talk about their experiences, the internships, the classroom environment, um, it was really something that appealed to me. And it's a little harder being everything online, but when it was in person, you can definitely tell that there's uh, a community in our major with our own building that's just for us and the BC kids. And we have a lot of similar classes. And so, there's not too many of us right now, so it's also good where you pretty much know everyone in your grade and you have multiple people in multiple classes. You're all taking the same classes, usually all at the same time, so you can all really help each other out. I got into this major by going into a CM ambassadors meeting by accident. Um, it was I had no clue what this major was until the spring semester of my freshman year. I didn't go to the info sessions, didn't do anything like that. I just actually walked into a room and they were talking about it. I was like, what are y'all talking about? And they started talking about it and I just fell in love with it then. Um, I knew I wanted to do something civil, so I was, it wasn't too different after. But I really, really wanted to do this one after that info session that I had with the CM ambassadors. So it was it's a fun measure. So Bo or Morgan, do you want to answer the question about, are you learning more about construction principles and engineering or more management aspects? I would say it's like a 70, 30%. Like we have like 30% management classes and 70% engineering slash construction classes. Um, you definitely get a lot more of the construction principles and engineering, but the management classes that we do take are very informative and very important to take as a, as for the major. And I enjoy the management classes a lot. In some ways, I enjoy them more than the engineering classes. So. And the engineering classes that we do take, um, some of them aren't really like general engineering classes. They're specifically construction engineering classes. Like there's really no other major, maybe besides civil, where you will need to learn these things. So even though it's technically engineering, it's kind of just a con construction class. Uh, and especially later in your uh, academic career, like your third or fourth year is when you really start focusing on those uh, construction management classes, while as at the beginning, especially if you come in as a general engineering student, you have to take more of those engineering classes at the beginning. So Morgan, I know you mentioned a little bit about being a part of the Building Women in Construction. Do you both want to talk about any experiences you've had with um, any of the student organizations? So I've been in a few of Virginia Tech student organizations. My freshman and sophomore year, I was part of a living learning community for uh, female engineers called Hypatia. And we have Galileo, which is our male counterpart. So even though it's not specifically focused for construction engineering students, uh, it was really great. And then for one of the events I did, I actually went and helped with the Habitat for Humanity project. And I was really interested in being able to see the physical doing the house project and I really liked it compared to what my major ended up being and then I joined building women construction my sophomore year and I've heard so many of uh, women in the industry even some men in the industry just their experiences the projects they're working on troubles they've had to do some fun stories they've had and it's really interesting to hear all these amazing stories and how complicated this stuff really is All right, we have another question in here. So where do you both see yourself in the future regarding your career paths and your goals? 
I'll go first. Um, I want to do. A, I'm going to do a project manager type as an, um, when I first start out from college, and I guess I just want to move up in the company. Their project management path. Um, they call it, like you can get. You start out with like one project. You manage one project, and then as you go in the major, as you go up into the company, you'll do multiple different projects at the same time. I just want to do like the project management side of my major and throughout my future that's like my number one goal i i don't have any like high like i don't want to be a ceo or anything like that of a company so i'm not worried too much about that i want to focus on what my major is so project management that's a hard question that i don't really have an answer for um but i'm really just interested to see the wide variations of the construct construction industry like one advice I've heard is they never expected where they'd be when they started in the industry, but boy, do they love where they are. And so that's kind of my point of view on the perspective. I'm going to love whatever I do just because it's such a great major. And there's just really something about building a project, seeing it being built, and then seeing people use it that is just going to be great regardless of what you make or how you help with it. And so that's kind of just, I'm just going to go along and see what the road holds. And what made you decide on Virginia Tech? So I forgot to mention where I was from at the beginning of the video, but uh, I'm actually from California. I did high school out there and I was from Pennsylvania before then, but I've had family from Virginia and they mentioned Virginia Tech. And so I've been to like five, six schools I looked at. And when you just walk on Virginia Tech's campus, it's, a different environment than like any other school I've seen. And it's really so much community based. The Oot Prozum, you can see it everywhere on campus, like every major, every person, you can see it. You can see tons of orange and maroon all over the place, all over the surrounding area. And it's just such a large community and you just feel something special about it when you get here. And the academics are pretty good, which doesn't hurt either. But the academic, good academics, good sports, good clubs. And there's just a wide range of networking, too. Like, all over the globe, we have Hokies everywhere. I think it's called Hokie Networking or something. But there's a huge, like, in every state, in many countries, there's tons of Virginia Tech graduates or connections that you can make everywhere. So it's it just was really great to see how much they are and how big their uh, reach is. Uh, two things got me to come to Virginia Tech. My uncle was an alumni, so I have that in with Virginia Tech. And I'm from a small town, and for such a big college, Virginia Tech still feels like a small town type of school. So I like that a lot. Do either of you have advice for prospective students as they're making their decision about college in general or um, even major um, related to construction? I have to say, if you know what you want to do, that's great. Like, it's great that you know what plan you're going to do. But if you don't know what you're going to do or what you want to do, or if you happen to change your mind, I mean, that's great too. I came into Virginia Tech thinking I was going to go to aerospace engineering. And then here I am doing construction engineering and management. And so there's a wide range of things you can do and some things things just pop up that you really interest you and you just feel you have to go down that path. So if you want know what you want to do, that's great. But if you don't know what you want to do, that can work out too. Just make sure you pick your school that you want to go to and that you're going to love it there for your four years because you're going to be there for four years more than likely. And for your major, make sure you absolutely love that because you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life more than likely. So that's my main types of advice for picking colleges and your degree. Make sure you love both because you're going to be doing this for the long haul. Um, what is the student-teacher ratio? Um, so I would say it varies a little bit from course to course. So right now in the CEM major, from sophomore through senior year, we have about 200 students in the major. So we're averaging close to 60 to 70 students um, per grade level. And so 
One thing that we've tried to do with the CEM courses is we've tried to keep the class sizes smaller. So we really try to offer two sections of each course so that you're about 30 to 40 students. Um, so that can be, I think, really nice too, so that you do get to know one another. Um, our students do also take civil engineering courses. Um, those can range, I would say, anywhere from 40 to maybe 60 students per section. Um, the same would be true for the building construction courses. So I would say on average, you're looking at 30 to 60 students um, per class. Um, Bo, Morgan, I don't know if you want to add anything else about that. It kind of also depends, like some of the uh, bigger classes, like mechanics of deformable bodies or statistics and physics. They usually have really big lecture halls, so they could be maybe around 100 students in there, but there's usually uh, about like six to eight TAs if they have a class that large. And then they, the lab sizes are definitely a lot smaller. They're probably about 20 students per lab session. And so they definitely make sure that there's enough people, whether it's a professor or a TA, who'd be able to help you uh, regardless of the class size. If we were in person, you could definitely get to know your teachers really pretty well. I can, you can, I can honestly say that because when I was in person, I got to know my teachers on a pretty good level before we went to virtual. Well, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at all. Um, you're always welcome to visit the CEM website. Um, if you search CEM Prospective Students, we have a ton of videos on there from alumni, faculty, um, as well as some of our current students. Um, Emmy has a video on there um, and a few of our other ambassadors. Um, I have a video on there about our curriculum and you can see all the different courses that you would take um, during that time frame. So um, there are just so many options um, for you to, to kind of check out more information and um, you're always welcome to email. Um, I'll actually share my screen here real quick and just highlight some of those things. So this is the prospective students page. Um, so you can definitely scroll down, click on any of the videos. We actually have a video from one of our recent career fairs if you wanna check that out. Um, here's my email address. It's just annlee3 at bt.edu. Um, and then we also have, if you go to people, you can click on ambassadors and you'll be able to see all of our current students. Um, you can click on their profile and get their email address. So if you want to talk more one on one with the student, um, you're welcome to do that as well. So thanks so much for joining us today.